So I hope everyone's enjoying the webinar so far. Um, I'm here to talk about my journey starting out at Coventry University to setting up a company. Um, as Lois said, my name's Harry, I'm the CEO of the startup company AB Power. Hopefully by hearing my experience, you'll be encouraged to take the leap and set up a sustainable business yourself. So first, before I tell you about the story, um, I'll give you a bit of information about the company. So our goal is to empower everyday people in transitioning to renewable energy and provide sustainable power for future generations. As of 2018, over half the UK greenhouse gas emissions come from the energy sector and transport. With the UK transitioning to electric vehicles in 2040, the demand for energy supply will only increase and our turbine will meet this demand and help achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal of providing affordable and clean energy. We're seeking to address the domestic market as we believe to combat climate change, we need to empower the general public. Uniting millions of individuals towards a common goal we will create a sizable impact on our mission in the UK. To unite the people, we must remove the barriers associated with the uptake of localised wind energy. Primarily, these are cost, ease of use, and aesthetics. So to tackle cost, the turbine boasts high efficiency and load factor. So this basically means that we can generate a large amount of energy from the wind, but we can also operate in large range of wind speeds. Um, these factors help to increase the yield of the turbine. Also, throughout the design process, we focus on keeping costs down, which has led to a competitive price of energy compared to the national grid. The turbine promotes ease of use, as there'll be very little interaction from the customer the wind turbine will just be an extension of the home. It simply does its purpose. As a home is a shelter for you, the wind turbine provides power for you. With the turbine being an extension to the home, it's been designed to optimize the planning application process, allowing no application in many situations, such as detached houses. Finally, aesthetics, a tricky situation as it's such a subjective matter. However, for our turbine, we've hired world-class designers who have worked for the likes of Audi and Coke, will also allow the customer to personalize aspects of their turbine so they can make it truly theirs. For example, they can choose from a selection of colors and tower types. By addressing these barriers, the product will be a transformative technology for tomorrow. So moving on to where my story started. My story started back in 2014, when I enrolled at Coventry University studying aerospace technology. Back then, I wanted to be a pilot, and I thought this course would be a great way into the industry. As it turns out, unsurprisingly, this was not the case. In fact, I remember on the very first day, the lecturer asked us to raise our hands, depending on the reason we joined the course. When she said, raise your hand if you wanted to be a pilot, she followed up saying, this is not the course for you. So that wasn't the best of first days. <laughs> and why Coventry University? Well, I studied geography, P and design and Coventry was one of only three universities in the whole of the UK that would let a foolish student like myself enroll on an engineering degree without any engineering experience. To help with my lack of experience, I regularly attended the university Math Sigma sessions. I even became the poster boy I was in there so often. Unfortunately, I just couldn't catch up on the fundamentals quick enough, and I ended up failing two modules, mathematics and electrical engineering. This was a real setback for me, as I've never experienced failure like this before. At this stage, I was seriously considering dropping the course and taking a design subject, as, I was, as I've always loved design. But in the end, with the help of tuition and endless summer days revising, I passed the resets and was allowed back on the course. So the second year was like a breath of fresh air regarding the studying. I was finally up to speed and could pick up the new material relatively easily. However, as always with life, when one thing is going well, another often goes wrong. The course I was enrolled with was a sandwich course, which meant halfway through that all students had to go on an industrial placement year. We had to secure these placements ourselves by preparing CVs, cover letters and interview prep for each job application. In the end, I sent out over 100 applications and received just two offers back. All I can say about that is I must be rubbish at writing cover letters. The first offer I received was with a pipe engineering company in Salisbury. They liked my CV and cover letter and asked for an interview. The interview went well and I got on really well with everyone and was verbally offered the job. This was in June 2016. 
On the 23rd of June that year, Britain voted to exit the European Union. I got an email the next day saying the company was no longer hiring and they couldn't take me on. Bear in mind, I'd been applying for jobs for the last 10 months and I only had three months left to secure a job before university started. Luckily, one week before university did start, I received an offer from Nordex, a wind turbine manufacturer in Germany. Within a month, I was working in a foreign country, living out of a hotel, while I got my bank account, tax ID and accommodation sorted. To make things worse, I was also trying to do all this while knowing literally no German. So my time at Nordex was life changing. It sounds cheesy, but the company was united and driven with a clear focus on the climate crisis. It was here I developed my passion for renewables and I've never changed my career direction since. With that said, living and working in Germany was hard. I really struggled socially with the language barrier and to help deal with this after work, I went to German lessons from six to nine every day. It made for long days, but it was worth it knowing I was developing a great skill. The work I was doing at Nordex was managing processes on Excel spreadsheets. It wasn't particularly enjoyable, but the repetitive nature of the work encouraged my creative side. It was during these days I used to sketch out wind turbine designs. I find myself pr primarily drawing vertical axis wind turbines as I found them much more aesthetically pleasing and I like the simplicity of them. I was also reading a lot into wind turbines during this time and was learning about their challenges and what solutions manufacturers had adopted. I discovered the two key elements of wind and any renewable energy for that matter are efficiency and load factor. This you'll remember the two key elements of AB Power's wind turbine. At the end of the placement, I was visited by a supervisor from Coventry University. His name was Rashid, and he had later become a good friend and co-founder of the company. Rashid has experience working with aerodynamics and several multi-million pound innovative projects. During his visit, we ended up chatting for hours about his experience and my new passion for renewables. One of the areas we discussed had innovative potential, and we agreed it would be the topic of my final year project once I returned home from Germany. So my final year was dominated with work on innovation. Over the course of the year, I'd successfully developed a tabletop model of the technology. The work was presented in my dissertation, which was awarded the Royal Aeronautical Prize for best project of the year. The top left picture was at the award ceremony. I also went on the Coventry University Ideas, Inspiration and Innovation competition. So this awarded both me and Rashid £10,000 to build a larger working prototype of the wind turbine and this was a huge deal for me as it was the first time I'd received funding for my achievements. The money was also used to submit a patent application for the technology. As you see in the top right picture this was taken just after we had the discussion and uh, as you see I didn't get the suit only memo. I ended up graduating from Coventry University with a first class honours. If you told me in first year, when I just failed two modules and was struggling to get a job, I would have never believed it. Having finally found something I loved, after pursuing careers as a pilot and designer, I knew now I wanted a career in renewables. More so, I wanted to continue working on the innovation I'd developed, and so I applied for a PhD working on the turbulence effects of the turbine. So I was due to start the PhD in September, but one month before, I received an email with the subject IKEA. IKEA stands for Innovation to Commercialization of University Research. It's a £35,000 scheme run by Innovate UK to promote the UK as an innovative nation. The scheme is aimed at completing market research into technologies to see if there is a market for them and see what other similar technologies exist. To complete the research, awardees must have at least 100 meaningful conversations with customers, competitors, suppliers, and any other industry specialists. And we had to do that all in the space of two months. Awardees are expected to travel to all markets around the world to ensure the research was a true global assessment. Naturally, I thought this was a great opportunity and I thought the PhD could wait. So I thought there's no harm in applying. To my surprise, a week after I sent off the application, I had a telephone interview and later that day was awarded a place on the programme. They later told me I was the youngest ever awardee on the scheme 
At the time, I thought this was great praise and I'd only truly understand what they really meant at the end of the programme. The programme itself was incredibly rewarding, but at the same time incredibly tough. It started with a week of intensive business training. As you'll see, this is where the shameless selfie was taken. But here we learned everything from networking to unique selling points. We also had to create a plan for the next two months with a cost breakdown of the travel required to visit trade shows and companies around the world. The first trade show we had in our plan was in five days time and it was in Melbourne, Australia. So that night I booked the flights and accommodation and the next Monday I was off. 24 hours later, I landed on a 7 a 24 hours later, I landed at 7 a.m. on the day of the trade show. I got straight in a cab to the hotel, had a quick shower, and then was off to the event and began networking. The next two months were pretty much the same. An absolute whirlwind of booking flights and accommodation, cold calling, reporting, and a lot of jet lag. I ended up visiting Australia, Hong Kong, Canada, several European countries, America, and Tanzania. I took the bottom right picture during my visit to LA, and that isn't actually a cloud on the horizon. It's smoke from the 2018 wildfires which were the deadliest ever recorded in California. This was a stark reminder of the importance of renewable energy. The bottom left picture is me and a friend called Noel I made in Tanzania. Tanzania was one of those trips that very nearly didn't actually happen. So I'd planned to go to a trade show in Dar es Salaam. After researching airports, I booked a flight to Kilimanjaro with the plan of getting a cab from the airport to the trade show. With everything book, booked in the flight the next day, I thought I'd check the timings and see how long the cab would take. I thought maybe half an hour or an hour, but no, it turned out it was 10 hours. I then realized that Dar es Salaam did actually have an airport, and luckily I managed to rebook the flight the next, the next, rebook the flight the next day, and I could still attend the trade show. Also, whilst all of this was happening, I was in London trying to get my visa sorted, with, which I only received 12 hours before the rescheduled flight. With all of that, you'd have thought it was a sign not to go, but fortunately it was a good trip and I made a great friend. Following the travel, I had to compile all the research I'd gathered into a 10 minute presentation for a board of Innovate UK representatives and industry specialists. So this was a gateway to the next stage of the programme. If the representatives were happy with the progress and the potential of the technology, they would grant a further 15,000 pounds to support a company startup and further guidance towards a bigger Innovate UK grant that was worth £210,000. I knew the weight of this presentation and the opportunities its success would give, so I spent endless nights working on it and memorising every line. I knew the whole thing off by heart to the exact second and the presentation went perfect. Later that week I found out we'd been awarded the money and this was the true beginning of AB Power. So at the start of this slide I mentioned about being the youngest ever awardee and now I'll explain why this wasn't just praise. These three months were life-changing for me. They brought great success and opportunity but not, with amount, not without huge amounts of stress. The constant pressure of performing, being outside of my comfort zone, struggling with finances and all combined with the fatigue of jet lag and sleepless nights took its toll. Fortunately, I have a very supportive family and they noticed the clear warning signs that it got too much and helped me seek support to manage the stress. There is no shame in seeking help when you need it. If you are struggling, you need to speak to someone and it really does help. And if you take one thing away from this presentation, please take that. So on a lighter note, the iCure follow-on funding is a grant aimed at developing successful iCure technology ready for market entry. It's match funded, so Innovate UK funds 70% of the project and expect awardees to source the other 30%. So to receive the maximum funding, I had to raise at least £90,000 externally. In preparation for the investor meetings, I knew I had to improve my knowledge on business. So I read a lot of books and worked hard on making the best business plan I could. Feeling prepared, I went, to a pitch, I went to pitch to an investor in Ireland and I was glad to find I could put one skill I learned at university to good practice as the meeting ended up in the pub. The next morning, albeit a bit hungover, we settled on a figure and I was travelling back to England having secured £100,000 for AB Power. I was extremely lucky to have such a successful first investor pitch.
With the funding sorted, I began work on the other areas of the application. I spent the next month negotiating IP, meeting business partners, briefing subcontractors, writing contracts, setting up a bank account, and organizing company finances. With everything in order, I submitted the application feeling optimistic. So the application itself is measured on a score system. So anything over 70% is awarded the funds. As you have seen, we scored 67% and I was gutted. I really thought the application was flawless. At this time in my life, I became very unsure what to do next. There was a real crossroad in my mind. Do I continue down this path of running a business or do I apply for a job and have the security of being employed at the same time? With the failed grant application, the company could not afford to pay salaries. So I soon used up my savings and maxed out my overdraft. With no money, my girlfriend and I were forced to cancel our rent contract and move in with my parents. After thinking long and hard about the company, I decided I couldn't quit now. I'd invested too much and had too many people depending on me. I assessed the feedback with Rashid and we both worked extremely hard to develop the application as we were allowed only one resubmission. In July last year, we received the email informing us of our resubmission score. We got 73%. The relief was immense, and what's more, I knew this was something I'd never give up on. I'd been given the opportunity to quit, and I hadn't. So the pro project is to develop, install, and test a full-scale prototype. We started in December last year, and have made great progress since. But then the world was hit by the worst pandemic of the 20th century, something I'll admit we failed to put in our project risk assessment. COVID-19 brought serious cash flow and timing challenges for our project. As the grant is only paid on arrears, we need an 80,000 pound loan. Our plan to raise this capital fell through as the economy crashed. Fortunately, with the vital support packages from Innovate UK and the government, we're confident we'll now complete this project. The next stages for AB Power rely heavily on funding. Following the success of this project, we'll complete certification of the turbine whilst also setting up a production line. These are capital intensive processes. And so the biggest challenge facing AB Power next year will be our strategy to raise this capital in a poor economy. With that said, I'm optimistic, not just for AB Power, but for all companies around the world. As bad as COVID is, this is a great opportunity for the world to restart, to reassess old ways and look for new sustainable choices. We have an opportunity like never before to adopt a build back better attitude to address the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. As you will have discovered, I never knew exactly what I wanted to do. I was always bouncing between career ideas. That was until I found renewable energy three years ago. Finding a career which has such a positive global impact is incredibly inspiring and motivating. I encourage you to pursue a career which develops the world in any way, no matter how big or small. Setting up a sustainable business is a great way of doing this. It's not easy starting a company. There are a lot of ups and downs, but you'll develop so much as a person that no matter if your business succeeds or fails, just by trying, you personally will succeed. As a closing message, I just want to read part of a speech by Steve Jobs in 2005. I've adopted this mindset and it helps me more times than I know to have the confidence to make big life decisions. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. I hope the, his words help you give the confidence to make the next decision in your life. Hopefully one which has a positive impact on the world. So trust in yourself and make a start. Thank you for listening.